Welcome, every welcome, everybody. Thank you for that. We haven't even given you your degrees yet. Thank you for that. Please, everyone, be seated. Members of the class of 2023, family members, friends, welcome to the 25th annual hooding ceremony of the University of Chicago Law School. And I want to emphasize that word of welcome. It is wonderful to greet all of you and to celebrate this milestone with you in person. For our LLM class of 2023, it's a terrific capstone to your year with us. You came to Chicago and you came to the law school at a moment of uncertainty in our world and continuing geopolitical challenge. You came and you embraced our law school, our city, and each other. Today, we salute you. For members of our JD class of 2023, I extend a special welcome and congratulations. You were admitted to the law school in the spring of 2020. It was a moment of global pandemic that was soon accompanied by economic crisis, mass political protests, deep political divisions. For some of us, the events of the world at that time affected us in deeply personal and severe ways. And for everyone, our ways of living and working were changed significantly and suddenly. Universities across the world, and certainly in this country, wondered if they would even have an entering class in the autumn of 2020. I remember some commentators who questioned whether Zoom teaching would mean the end of campuses and the end of universities themselves. But in the midst of that uncertainty, you chose to go to law school. And more than that, you chose to come to our law school. You made a personal commitment to your education and to learning at a moment when the world was skeptical. And you came to a law school with an enthusiasm for the life of the mind, a conviction that ideas matter and are worth discussing. Ours is a law school that doesn't impose a single viewpoint or style of thought, but instead exposes you to contrasting views and has confidence in your ability to think critically and independently and to choose your own path. And you came to a law school with a faculty that was dedicated to pathbreaking, even field-defining scholarship, a faculty that employs a multiplicity of approaches to address the most pressing issues in our legal system. And more than this, you came to a law school with a faculty eager to teach you. This teaching is a sharing of knowledge, but also an invitation to engage in dialogue, both with the faculty and with your classmates. In short, members of the class of 2023, you chose to come to a distinctive law school. We are very glad you did. Thank you. And you came because I believe Chicago students are not admitted, they are made. They are made through learning. You came to learn and you learned a lot. You learned about a medical patient who endured a weirdly hirsute skin graft. You learned about a reservoir that flooded a neighboring mine. Maybe you learned about shipwrecked voyagers who resorted to cannibalism and so much more. In other words, you learned a good deal of the law itself, you learned legal doctrine. And between now and the bar exam, July 27th and 28th in most states, in case you don't know, you will surely learn much more of the content of law. But more important than the content of law itself, you learned how to think about legal questions. You learned specific skills, such as how to read legal materials with discernment and subtlety. You learned the art of common law reasoning, and learn different ways to interpret statutory and constitutional texts. But still, even more than that, you developed habits of mind. You acquired an intellectual disposition, a disposition of inquiry and questioning, a questioning of assumptions, of logical steps, of the quality of argument and the quality of evidence. This disciplined way of thinking is characteristically Chicago. And now you, too, possess this Chicago tendency for a rigor of thought. And you also learned and sharpened a set of values. Some of these, such as the belief in ideas I've already described. But you also learned that intellectual inquiry is better done in a group 
with others rather than alone. The questioning that I described requires a dialogue of others. This learning and searching for knowledge is therefore a collective endeavor. It's why learning in our classrooms, in our clinics, in our hallways is participatory, not passive. And discussing and questioning is how knowledge is best created, refined, and tested. Now, for those of you who attended the university's main convocation this morning, you heard our colleague Tom Ginsburg talk about the importance of conversation and questioning as a pillar of our democracy. Conversation requires both listening and friendly challenges. It builds bonds of professional respect and often personal friendship. Immediately for you, this value of dialogue and questioning means that over the many hours that you have developed it, in your classrooms and clinics, in the library and in journal offices, in the Green Lounge, discussing, debating, and learning together with your classmates. All of your hard work, individually, together, studying, writing, rewriting, ultimately honed your discipline of thought. You did it. Congratulations. And there's something else that will come from this beyond the knowledge that you acquired, beyond the skills, beyond the habits of mind. All of your hard work and that collective intellectual work, both with your faculty members and with each other, also represent a special bond with each other and with the law school. Now, some people like to say that obtaining a degree from the University of Chicago is to join a fellowship of reason. Today, you join that fellowship because you have become and will become alumni of the law school. You will join an intellectual community of our graduates. And I'm confident that the class of 2023, given the personal commitment that you made at a very challenging moment to attend here and to learn here, will mean that your class will be a beacon within our alumni community. And today, you should feel a deep sense of optimism and excitement for your futures. Now, it's unlikely that your professional work is going to involve skin grafts or shipwrecks, but your careers will take many paths. You may go into government service. You may go into big law, small law. You may go into public interest. You may lead a business venture or lead a large organization. You may choose some other new adventure. All of these paths are worthwhile. And you may, in your career, have the opportunity to do more than one of them. All of them will require your analytical minds, your sound judgment, both your skills and your habits of thinking. The knowledge you obtained here and the values that you find here will serve you and your clients very well. Members of the class of 2023, again, congratulations. It is now my great honor to introduce our alumnus of the year and our speaker, Thomas Cole, member of the class of 1975. And before I introduce him, I want to recognize uh, that we have several special guests with us here today. Now, Tom Cole is a man of great humility. For all of his accomplishments, he does not usually travel with an entourage, but today he has. He, we are joined by several members of the Board of Trustees because they hold Tom in such high esteem that they wish to come and celebrate with him and celebrate you. So I'm thrilled to welcome here on the chancel, Mary Lou Gorno, Vice Chair of the University's Board of Trustees and a graduate of the Booth School of Business, and Barry Fields, a member of the Law School Class of 1991, also a member of our Board of Trustees and now Chair of our Medical Center Board and also a lecturer at the Law School. We are honored by their presence. Please join me in welcoming them. And it is a great honor to introduce our alumnus of the year, Tom Cole. Tom Cole is chair emeritus and a retired partner at the law firm Sidley Austin. 
Now, the biography on his firm's well website will tell you that his practice has focused on public company mergers and acquisitions and corporate governance. This is an artful understatement. Tom Cole effectively created the field of corporate governance. He helped establish it both as a field of practice, distinct from the practice of corporate law. He has been a leading practitioner of that field, regularly representing clients at their most crucial and consequential moments. After graduating from our law school with honors and as a member of the Order of the Coif, Tom Cole joined the Sidley firm and then became partner in 1981 and remained partner until becoming senior counsel in 2017. Along the way, Tom also served for four years as president of Northwest Industries. He has been a leading figure in advising and executing on public company mergers and spin-offs. The list of transactions just limited to those valued at more than a billion dollars that Tom has advised on is tremendous. Tom's expertise, wisdom, and advice on sought-after topics ranging from proxy contests to CEO successions is incredible. During his practice, he received a number of incredible, uh, important recognitions, regularly listed as one of the most influential pe people in boardrooms and one of the top lawyers globally. Now, shortly after I became dean, I think maybe it was in our second conversation, Tom mentioned to me in passing, at least I think it was in passing, that part of his success had been that he had developed something of an expertise in firing executives. Now, ever since then, whenever my caller ID has lit up, showing that Tom Cole is calling, or I have received an email asking to get together from Tom, it has departed a certain, imparted a certain piquancy to the workday. Now, there is no person that an executive in any organization or a leader in any business enterprise would rather have in their boardroom or in their office than Tom Cole. Were his incredible practice not enough, he was a leader of his law firm. From 1988 through 2014, he was a member of the firm's management committee. And for 15 years, he was chair of the firm's executive committee, which exercises authority over the, fair, over the affairs of the firm. And during his chairmanship, Sidley enjoyed unprecedented growth, expansion, and success. The depth of Tom's experience, his keen insight into how organizations work and should work, and his understanding of how leaders can more effectively manage and lead their organizations simply have no equal. I'm grateful often to have been the beneficiary of his advice. Now, many of these insights are captured in two recent books that he has authored, one on CEO leadership, and a second on called Collaborative Crisis Management. These books are remarkable for their insight and the clarity of their thought. Tom Cole has received, as I mentioned, many important recognitions. But amidst all of his responsibilities, he has also taught a seminar on corporate governance for many years at our law school. He began doing this when the whole notion of corporate governance was, as a distinct topic of understanding, was in its infancy. And Tom helped this field emerge. His students have regularly sang the praises of his teaching, and his former students have gone on to tremendous careers themselves, often in positions of great leadership. Tom Cole is a top practitioner, leading executive, devoted teacher, selfless civic servant, acclaimed author, and loyal son of the university. It is an honor to introduce him as our 2023 Distinguished Alumnus of the Year. Thank you, Dean Miles, for that overly generous introduction. And thank you for your outstanding leadership of our great law school. It's an honor for me to be selected to say a few words to you. Uh, my few words may be even shorter than the introduction, which you're pleased to hear, I think. My ongoing relationship with the law school is a reflection of my sense of indebtedness to this place. It's the place that allowed me, that prepared me for my life's work and has allowed me to spend time with so many sensational students. I'm indebted to Jeff Stone, who, when he was dean, invited me to teach a course, a seminar in corporate governance. That invitation from Jeff came almost exactly a year after he told me that adjuncts were a terrible idea. And I'm indebted to all the deans since then for inviting me back. 
I also feel indebted to many of the legendary professors whose portraits grace the halls of the law school. Lolly Blum, one of the great teachers of all time, Bernie Meltzer, Soya Menshikoff, and others. I also feel indebted to my classmates in my study group. We taught each other well. And long ago, I got over being humiliated by one particular professor who I will not name. I foolishly volunteered in class in the first week of my first year. I thought I said something pretty brilliant. He responded to my remark by looking at his shoes for about a five count. It seemed longer at the time. He then moved on without even acknowledging I had spoken. That was a moment of existential angst. I think he would be surprised to see me here today. I want to cover two things briefly. First, to welcome you to our storied profession. Second, to share a few suggestions as a supplement to your superb education. I hope these suggestions will be useful to you, whether you practice law or pursue any of the many other endeavors and opportunities that will come your way because of your education and your intelligence. So, welcome to the profession. This is message of welcome is largely directed to those of you who are receiving your JD, but my broader message is also intended to you, among uh, the practitioners among you who've received your LLM or JSD. Here's the message. We should all remember that we are engaged in a profession. I much prefer using the word profession to descriptions of the practice of law as either a business or an industry. Obviously, many of us serve businesses and all kinds of industries. And my comments are not meant to minimize the importance of what they do. Nor do I mean to suggest that law firms should not be operated in a business-like fashion. Nevertheless, it's important to recognize we are engaged in a profession. We are different, and we should remember and celebrate and preserve that, that difference and recognize the responsibilities it brings to us. For example, our profession demands that we engage in lifelong learning to support our craft. Continuing legal education is an important concept. You will find that out. Even more important is our commitment to activities and ideals that go beyond our day-to-day -day work. The legal profession has a grand tradition of providing pro bono services and civic engagement. In addition, many of the most successful practitioners advance the careers of their competitors by speaking at seminars and writing articles. Most important, of course, is the pivotal role our profession plays in supporting the rule of law among the most critical elements of our democracy. So welcome to our profession. Be proud of it. It deserves it. Now for my three elements of, of advice. I want to spend a few minutes on each of resilience, demeanor, and reputation. Resilience. Unless you've had an unusually sheltered existence, you already know that life has its ups and downs. Not every profession, careers will follow a similar path. Not every professional or even personal encounter will result in a win. Remember what Nelson Mandela said, I never lose, I either win or I learn. Learning from disappointment requires resilience. So how do you bolster your resilience? First, you're awfully young, but pay attention to this. Pay attention to your health, both physical and mental. Achieving a, a decent work-life balance is a good start to that. And that requires investing time and energy in, among other things, your relationships with others, parents, a spouse or significant other, children and friends. Think of those folks as important clients. Investing time and energy, and yes, money, in giving back to your community through civic and charitable endeavors can also help you strike a good balance. Sure, you should have some me time, but don't be the person who says, enough about me, let's talk about you. What do you think of me? Second, think of feedback as a gift. Learn from it, be resilient, when you receive criticism, even when it is not gently delivered. And most importantly, if at any time in your career you feel overwhelmed, reach out to a mentor or someone else who can help you out. Seeking help is a sign of strength. It is a sign of courage. Demeanor. Executive recruiters, sometimes they say they like to search for people whom others will want to see succeed. 
How do you become one of those people? Again, a good start is humility. Recognize that your success is not only the result of your talent and hard work. It is also to a greater or lesser degree attributable to, attributable to the support you have received from others, especially those who are here celebrating with you today. It is also attributable to a healthy serving of good luck. You have graduated from an elite school, an elite law school. My four daughters, even the one who went to Harvard, have frequently heard me call our school the world's greatest law school, which I truly believe, maybe intergalactically the greatest. You are well on your way to becoming part of the elite of our profession. That said, resist elitism. I was going to say eschew elitism, but that sounded kind of elitist. <laughs> Two more components of prof proper professional demeanor. While we have been trained to espouse positions with vigor, learn to disagree without being disagreeable. Too many folks, and not just lawyers, fail to heed this admonition. Arrogance and, aggressive, and, and excessive aggressiveness in espousing a position can be counterproductive. It can cause folks to tune out, question the validity of your position, or otherwise be counterproductive. And failing to listen fully to what others say has a similar impact. Being a good listener ju doesn't just mean waiting your turn to speak. Finally, be nice to support staff. Never yell. They will stop supporting you. Worse, you will go into your room and have yeller's remorse. You don't want to do that. Avoid sarcasm and say please and thank you early and often. And when you're in a position to supervise other lawyers, think of them that way. Uh, lastly, reputation. Good professional demeanor that I just spoke about is just one element of positive personal reputation. There are others. You want to be known for integrity, intellectual and personal. And remember, if you associate with people of questionable integrity, some of their flaws may rub off on you or be attributed to you. You wouldn't be here if you weren't somewhat ambitious. Consider earning a reputation, earning a reputation for being selflessly ambitious. By that I mean display to others that you are as interested in their success and in your organization's success as you are in your own achievements. Selfless ambition. Develop a reputation for responsiveness. We're in a service business. Did I say business? We're in a service profession. Being responsive to clients is critical, but being responsive to your colleagues is critical to collaboration. And here's one of my favorites. Be concise in delivering advice. I hope I haven't failed that so far. Be concise in delivering advice. Remember that your goal is to be informative, not to show people how smart you are. They will never, they will never regret when you say, I'll be brief. Finally, maintain a positive outlook. A reputation for positivity is better than the opposite. Many of you have read the books and articles by Atul Gawande. He's the surgeon and professor at Harvard Medical School. He gives this advice to medical residents. Don't participate in gripe sessions. They bring you down and don't get you anywhere. So with resilience, a professional demeanor, and a carefully cultivated reputation, all on top of the superb education you've received here, you will have great success in our storied profession or whatever other career you choose to, to pursue. Let me end this way. Remember the story I told at the beginning about the professor who stared at his shoes? Remember him? There's a denouement that greatly attributed to my personal resilience. A few weeks later, after that episode, he looked in my direction. I was much relieved when he addressed the student behind me. The professor said to my classmate, you are shaking your head. Do you disagree? My classmate responded, oh, I'm sorry, professor. If I'm shaking my head, it is simply to stay awake. <laughs> Blind grading is a wonderful thing. Thanks for listening. Congratulations, and congratulations to your parents. Thank you very much, Tom. It's now my great pleasure to introduce our faculty speaker, Professor Lee Fennell. Pro <laughs> Pro 
Professor Fennell is the Max Pam Professor of Law. As I mentioned at, the, at my opening remarks, the faculty of our law school are the most intellectually ambitious scholars, tackling the big questions in our legal system, bringing creativity and rigor to bear on those questions, often taking an interdisciplinary approach, applying methodologies and ideas from different scholarly fields and disciplines. Simultaneously, our faculty are dedicated teachers, eager to share knowledge and explore ideas with our students, and excited to impart that, that enthusiasm for continuous inquiry. And I am thrilled that Professor Lee Fennell is our speaker today because she embodies all of these high aspirations of our faculty. Professor Fennell is a scholar who specializes in property law, torts, land use, housing, and state and local government law. She's the author of more than 50 academic articles, plus dozens of commentaries and multiple books. Her scholarship combines an unmatched knowledge of the finest nuances of legal doctrine with innovative interdisciplinary ideas. She is a leading figure in law and economics, but she also pushes the boundary of that field by combining it with a rigorous analysis of distributional consequences. I think a key feature of Professor Fennell's scholarship is that she identifies core questions or problems that others have overlooked, and then upon identifying them, she shows how they recur in a variety of concepts and a variety of contexts within the law and often in life beyond the law. Professor Fennell's writing sparkles with a distinctive clarity and insight, and perhaps this is because in addition to her law degree, magna cum laude from Georgetown, she also holds an MFA in fiction writing. She joined our faculty after previously teaching at the universities of Texas in Illinois, or I should say more precisely, rejoined our faculty because she began her academic career as a Bigelow Fellow at our law school. Professor Fennell is also a brilliant teacher as many members of the class of 2023 know firsthand. She's a true innovator in the classroom, deploying PowerPoints and polling to enhance Socratic dialogue with new technology. Now, members of the class have written in her teaching evaluations, which I took a look at in preparing this introduction. Your classmates wrote such things as, Professor Fennell is a standout, one of the true greats of our faculty. One of you wrote, I didn't think I would be enthusiastic about property, but Professor Fennell is so knowledgeable and so enthusiastic, I love it. Another wrote simply, amazing, all caps. I am honored to introduce our 2023 faculty speaker, Professor Lee Fennell. Thank you, thank you, Dean Miles, for that overly, overly generous introduction. I'm excited and honored to be here with all of you, graduates, parents, family members, friends, colleagues, on this wonderful day. Nobody graduates from this law school without a busload of hard work, fortitude, resilience, and smarts. Not all of it your own, but you made it, carrying with you everything that everyone who loves you did all along the way to get you here. You made it through a pandemic, you made it through Chicago winters, you made it through property class, with or without learning the rule against perpetuities. You made it in spite of everything that was and is going on in the country and in the world. But as happy as today is, and as beautiful as this space is, and as proud of you as you've made your folks and your professors, and as awesome as your caps and gowns look, getting here was never the point. You only made it this far so that you can go further and help others go further still. So what can I tell you today that will help you on this journey, that will see you through the challenging, difficult times ahead, that will enable you to confront injustice and illogic without losing hope, that will inspire you to use your manifest gifts to protect all that's lovely and fragile and true. In a word, nothing. If we've done our jobs here, and I hope we have, you should be well-nigh platitude-proof by now, suspicious of slogans, wary of absolutes, you're going to see right through to the other side of any edicts for living or lawyering that I might try to lay on you here. 
So instead, I want to channel a past Chicago faculty member, Carl Llewellyn. Llewellyn was a famous legal realist, the principal drafter of the Uniform Commercial Code, and the spouse of the law school's first woman professor, Soya Minchikoff, who is also a UCC co-drafter. Uh, both Carl, Carl's and Soya's portraits are in the hallway outside of room four in the law school. So you've no doubt seen them hundreds and hundreds of times while milling around before or after class, waiting in line to get food for a lunch talk. Uh, but since it can be hard to notice what's always there, you might want to check them out later. Llewellyn taught at the law school from 1951 until his death in 1962. Although I have been at Chicago a very long time, I did not actually overlap with him on the faculty. But I feel he was a kindred spirit for a few reasons. One is that, like me, Llewellyn had to contend with a name that contains double L's. Two sets of double L's in his case, which is really just excessive. I, I assume that at least one was always getting left off. Second. He seemed prone to distracting side quests like writing songs, poems, bits of fiction, and unserious essays. I know this from looking at his papers in special collections here, and I can tell you he was quite a pack rat with his unpublished writings. Third, we seem to have shared a penchant for using visual aids. As some of you know, I use PowerPoint a lot. Uh, Llewellyn predated PowerPoint and would have been too cool to use it, but his papers in special collections, wondrously enough, include an actual box of chalk. This is not plain white chalk, but chalk in a variety of intense colors, accompanied by the handwritten question, who can teach jurisprudence without colored chalk? Who indeed? I wish I could have seen some of his diagrams. I wish I knew his chalk supplier. What I love about this box of chalk is how it conveys the desire to drill down and grapple creatively with complexity, to try to get to the bottom of things in a memorable and vivid way. Llewellyn's chalk is pure, bright potentiality. It's a medium that's dynamic and revisable and impermanent. You might say, life is like a box of chalk. One of Llewellyn's most well-known pieces appeared in the Vanderbilt Law Review in 1950, entitled, Remarks on the Theory of Appellate Decision and the Rules or Canons about How Statutes Are to be Construed. You might know it as the Dueling Canons paper. In it, Llewellyn tries to demonstrate that for every rule of statutory interpretation, there's a counter rule that holds more or less the opposite. And this article includes a visual aid of sorts, a chart constructed in two columns, one entitled Thrust and the other entitled Parry, to try to get the dueling notions going. And there's also a lot of footnotes to cases demonstrating each move. And by the way, Llewellyn credits his research assistant at Columbia, Charles Driscoll, for having helped to develop all of this swords personship. So let me give you a few examples, quoting directly from Llewellyn's article. And I don't have a fencing background, so you'll have to bear with me. But I'll give you a few examples here. Thrust, a statute cannot go beyond its text, but parry. To affect its purpose, a statute may be implemented beyond its text. Thrust, if language is plain and unambiguous, it must be given effect. But parry, not when literal interpretation would lead to absurd or mischievous consequences or thwart manifest purpose. Thrust, every word and clause must be given effect. But parry, if, you, if inadvertently inserted or if repugnant to the rest of the statute, they may be rejected as surplusage. So you get the idea. Whether you buy Llewellyn's dueling canons theory or not, there's really no denying that it's, well, canonical. Right? Uh, but what does it have to do with you today besides giving you one last dose of legal realism for the road? Just this. As you go about your career, you're likely to hear some canons for lawyering and for living. And often they're dueling. Some examples. Never give up. Know when to cut your losses. Seize every opportunity. Learn to say no. Lean in. Lean out. Be generous with your time. Prioritize what matters to you. Don't miss the forest for the trees. The devil's in the details. Don't get sidetracked. Take a detour now and then. Err on the side of caution. Don't be afraid to take risks. Again, you get the idea. And this isn't news to you. In his book, The Bramble Bush, Llewellyn addressed these words to students. 
Already you are almost lawyers. Three years you've been studying the law. Are you still unaware that every doubtful point is regularly answered both ways by authority? End quote. Now that doesn't mean, of course, that there are two sides to everything. Some principles admit of no counterpoint. Live your life with integrity in matters large and small. Treat everyone with fairness and equal respect. And as you navigate all the dueling canons, take heed of the tremendous responsibility you bear for the choices you make, for the life you build, and for the legal culture you create. Here's Llewellyn once more from the Bramble Bush. We, and no others, carry the burden of making the law worth having over the long run and from day to day, end quote. So there's nothing I can say to prepare you for the hard, heartbreaking, tedious, glorious work ahead. But it's a privilege to have taught you and to witness you now walking out into your life, your world, your legal system, carrying a University of Chicago law degree, your own bright chalk. I can't wait to see what you do with it. Thank you and congratulations. Thank you, Professor Fennell. We will now proceed with the conferral of degrees. Dean Miles, it is my honor to present these students who have completed the program of studies prescribed by the faculty of the law school. They have been awarded the degree of Master of Laws by the Board of Trustees. I congratulate these graduates on the successful completion of a program of advanced study in the law school, culminating in the degree of Master of Laws. Will the graduates please come forward to receive your diploma and then your academic hood, as I call your name. Charlotte Agnew Harrington. Lampros. Anastasopoulos. Pablo Arredondo. Lawrence Hector B. Arroyo. Chanisara Puta Charo and Lap. Fernando Bustos Cardemil. Maria Julia Carvalho Pinto. Alberto Castillo Bielpando is being hooded by his brother, Fernando Castillo. <laughs> Deborah Cercaira. <laughs> Darmendra Chatur. <laughs> Yung Wei Chen. Natalia Davila. Tomás de la Maza. Rachi Duta. Victor Luis Sigao Ferraz. Laura Figueiredo Rivas Blanco. Louis Francois. <laughs> Mary 
Milena Sardinia Garces Faria. Javier Humberto García Vélez. Francisca Sophie Gehan. Hui Yang Guo. Rafi Hadianda. Yuka Hayashi. Sai Chun Su. Yue Hu. Kazuki Ichikawa. Yuzuka Ichikawa. Daisuke Ikukawa. Alexi Ivliev. Evangelos Kalogianis. Yusuke Konishi. Jing Li. Yong Yi Lin. Naoki Maeda. Pablo Martinez. Arun Menon. Sihi Miao. Cristobal Morales Dake. Juliana Neves. Kohei Nomura. Misha Sanjay Patel. Anna Pavlicheva. Amra Rachmanov. Eduardo Eloy Ramos Armengol. Christian W. Ries. Ricardo M. Rizzo Patron. Anna Margarita A. Rodriguez. Solen Roizal. Jose Tomas Saez. Tananert Sakol Vitayanon. Jaime Salinas Mueller. Fernanda Santiago. Giovanni Scalvi. Daniel Chamelo. Yi Shi. Yong Shik Shin. Nicolás Silva Cadena. Varsha Srinivasan. Chandrasekhar Sriram. Lucas Stumpf.
Renbin Su. Harshvardhan Sundar. Fumia Sunose. Marcos Tayana. Wataru Takagishi. Shu Takami. Yuki Tominaga. Joanna Maria Vara. Chung Wang. Yuki Watanabe. Ting Wei. Emmanuel Vinant. Ke Yang Xie. Rieko Yamauchi. Congratulations to the LLM class of 2023. Dean Miles, it is my honor to present these students who have fulfilled all the requirements prescribed by the faculty of the law school to qualify them for the profession of law. They have been awarded the degree of Doctor of Law by the Board of Trustees. I congratulate these graduates on the successful completion of a program of study in the law school culminating in the degree Doctor of Law. Will the graduates please come forward to receive your diploma and then your academic hood as I call your name. Alec Todd Atkins. Crystal Kwabia Adepoku. Elizabeth Ashley Aiken. Francesca Isabel Alamo. Ariel Clara Umbra Juarez. Sophia Amir. Michael Peter Antashowitz. Fernando Adrian Arias. Lena Bader. Mary Elizabeth Barnett. Abigail J. Barney. Isaiah A. Beaton. Larissa Marie Bedley. Christian Sidney Beveridge. Patrick Edelman Boldea. Ryan Benjamin Bronstein. Avery Amelia Broom. Kendall Ray Bryant. Justin Burry. Maggie Jane Bushell. James Patrick Callahan, Jr. Spencer Kimball Caro. Claire M. Chiodini. Rebecca Chong. Ali Chu. Yeah. 
Sheridan Chris Nock. Natalie Grace Cerisi. Alessandro Giovanni Clark Ansani. Ezra Cohen. William Carter Cope. Michaela Grace Colbertson. Timothy Edward Cunningham Jr. Tanvi Datani. Joshua John Davis. Morgan Marie DePoctor. Javier Andres Diaz Molina. Gabriel D. Doman. Avrier J. Dorsey. Joseph T. Downey. Lauren Elizabeth Dunn. Tyler Anthony Easley. Crystal Abigail Chinure Egbuchalam. Samuel B. Ellis. Joshua Gray Ezekson. Aaron Nicholas Faison. Ivan Ding Fan. Ryan Daniel Fain. Price Andrew Figarelli Reed. Bryn Noel Fullman. Brittany Lee Foxhall. Noah J. Frazier. Ansan Fung. Laura McLean Geary. Brandon Ali Gaddafi. McKenna L. Gilliland. Shelly Gold. Connie Gong. Joaquin K. Gonzalez. Johan H. Gonzalez. Brian Waring Gray. Alexander Jared Green. Madison A. Gregg. Lucas Jack Grisham. Palmer John Gunderson. Ryan Sun Guo. Christopher Gutierrez. Alexander Takayuki Hall. Kelly Ann Hall. Yusuf M. Helmi. Justin Taylor Holloman. Ian J. Howard. Ian is being hooded by his sister, Alyssa Howard.
Charlie Y. Hu. Carolyn Frances Hughes. Samuel Harrison Hummel. Oyenlola Urukayat Isiaka. Catherine Rose James. Allison Page Jenkins. Nicole Renee Joden. Jack William Johanning. Lee Elizabeth Johnson. Robert Johnson III. Matthew Kaba Abood. Catherine Kaplan. Catherine is being hooded by her father, Daniel Kaplan. Tori Nicole Keller. Catherine Rose Kennowell. Scott Kinkle. Anjay Korana. Krista Marie Kalinsky. Sojung Madeline Kim. Emily Page King. Logan Kirkpatrick. Benjamin Charles Klein. Miriam Shifra Cohn. Ryan Thomas Coquel. Annie Kors. Catherine Marie Koza. Vatsala Kumar. Emma Honor La Bounty. Jace Jonesiak Lee. Jack E. Leitner. Sarah Elizabeth Leitner. Jaden M. Lesnick. Dan Young Lee. Yu Hong Liang. Aaron Isaac Liskov. Shong Chi Andrew Liu. Alexandra Ray Maloney. Julian Fletcher Manasa Boatani. Martin Martinez. Kian N. Martin. Graciela Eliza Mayneto. Michael Craig McHugh. Robert Michael McCutcheon. Janelle Elise McGregory. <laughs> Olivia Zora Miller. 
Tani Thantrong Monin. Thomas Moore. Daniel Cole Mosley. Maren Kinsey Murdoch. Christopher Brendan Bay Music. Narayan T. Narasimhan. Joshua Nathanson. Jane V. Ninavaji. Maggie M. New. Matthew Nolan. Brendan Patrick O'Brien. Robert Shohei Okada. Jillian H. Pack. Stella Park. Spencer James Parts. Emily Pastrana. Jacqueline Catherine Picaro. Angela Marie Peterson. Paige Harper Petrashko. Madison Alyssa Phillips. Matthew Holden Phillips. Nathaniel Bruce Pollock. Nathaniel is being hooded by his mother, Jessica Pollock. Sravya Punagonti. Bradley J. Posdell. Peter Povalonis. Kristen Juliet Catherine Powell. Arjun Prakash. Elena Prieto. Alice Wen Chen. Jordan Michelle Rabani Jenkins. Mario D. Ramirez de la Pacina Mozon. Claire Jennifer Rice. Nicholas A. Riley. Matthew R. Rittman. Matthew Mikowski Roberts. Connor J. Robinson. M. Virginia Robinson. Pia Paz Roca. Ellen Grace Rogers. Adam Lind Rowe. Alyssa Margaret Rush. Jamie Gabriella Savitson. Jeffrey Philip Salvador. Dylan B. Salzman. 
Camille Jasmine Sanchez. Nicholas Connor Skolnick. Haley Danielle Shobar. Aaron Elizabeth Simmons. Rennick B. Sloan. Ramey Solomon Sloan. Gracie Jane Smith. Lauren Christine Smith. Ji Hong Son. Cameron Cadre Steckbeck. Molly Catherine Stepchuk. Fernando Stepensky. Christopher Shane Stoy. Grant Forbes Strudwick. Priya Aniyanta Suri. Graydon Glenn Sutton. Kara Nok Won Wing Ta. Charles R. Tammons Jr. Sarah M. Tanner. Alice Marie Thompson. Nicholas Gabriel Thompson Geras. Margaret Ann Tenard. Michael D. Thurston. Margaret Ann Spencer Toms. Andrew H. Townsend. Eric Douglas Eubel. Grace Molinari Yule. Ariana Bryn Basie. Alberto Vargas. John E. Walker. Moncarol Yuji Wang. Yishuan Wang. Brandon Christopher Ward. Sean Y. Shu. Zhang Yun Matthew Shu. Doris D. Schur. Jeffy Thorngren Yang. Carol Yao. Christina E. Zaldivar. Rebecca Shi Zhu. Mitchell T. Zia. Congratulations to the JD class of 2023.
So this concludes the law school's 25th diploma and hooding ceremony. I ask that you please remain in your seats for the recessional so our faculty uh, and graduates can then recess out. And after the recessional, please join us at the law school for a reception. I particularly ask that you please don't linger too long in front of the chapel. Instead, please come across the midway and join us at the law school. Another unit of the university has its ceremony in here immediately following us. So if you would please grant them that courtesy, I would greatly appreciate it. So uh, we will proceed out and please join me in one more round of applause for the class of 2023.